separateness is an illusion. There is not a physicist right now on the planet that would not argue the fact that every single one of us is connected at a much deeper level than we ever give credit for. We are all connected, even when we are not physically together. What we do, each and every one of us, has an impact on people who are at a physical distance from us. And this understanding could change lives. People would not have to feel alone today or any other day if they could see we are all connected. No one is alone. This is important to me because sometimes I feel lonely. It makes me sad and it contributes to my depression. When I moved to Southern New Mexico this April, I left a lot of friends, a familiar community and my comfort zone. I became homesick, sad, and lonely. I forgot that we are all one. We are all connected. There are machines that measure this connection. Right now, the Global Consciousness Project collects data continuously from these machines around the world. They measure a significant difference during events like 9-11, the death of Princess Diana, and even on positive occasions like Earth Day and global meditations. The current global situation we are in connects us and at the same time separates us. It is an experience of a physical separation unlike any other in our history. Because of COVID-19 and the worldwide quarantine, many of us found ourselves experiencing extreme separation and loneliness. I know I did. I'm a mental health counselor and during COVID, I hear about the many people experiencing loneliness and boredom from being in isolation. As I hear about stress from the pandemic from all my clients, I need to hold on to hope or else I would be struggling. I originally discovered an access to hope when I ran across a legendary story that illustrated how we are all connected. More than 30 years ago, at a Hawaii State Hospital, there was a special ward for the mentally ill. Murderers, rapists, and kidnappers were housed there. It was an extremely violent place. No day would go by without inmates attacking each other or a member of the staff. One day, a newly appointed clinical psychologist arrived, Dr. Stanley Hugh Len. Staff were skeptical. Then, when he arrived, he did not seem to be doing much of anything except being cheerful and smiling in a very natural and relaxed way. He never even tried to see the inmates personally. Apparently, he just sat in his office, looked at the prisoners' files, and said a simple prayer over each. The Ho'oponopono. The Ho'oponopono is an ancient Hawaiian practice for healing. It is a simple prayer and goes like this. I love you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Thank you. Day after day, Dr. Hugh Len would pray over the files of these prisoners, then go home. Wouldn't you know, little by little, things started to change. The gardens started being taken care of. Tennis courts were repaired. Prisoners started playing tennis with the staff. Less prisoners were in shackles, and even less were receiving heavy-duty pharmaceutical drugs. Dr. Hugh Len worked there for close to four years. In the end, only a couple of inmates remained who were eventually relocated, and the clinic for the mentally insane criminals had to close. This man, without ever having met these prisoners, would say a prayer for each, and in each case, people got better. It is almost unthinkable that we can have this kind of power and connection. So I thought I'd try. Once I heard the story about the doctor at the Hawaiian hospital 
in the Ho'oponopono prayer, I promised myself to never forget it. I started to apply that way of thinking to my patients. My first counseling job was focused on drug and alcohol counseling in small town Española, New Mexico. It is one of the opioid epidemic capitals in the United States. When I lost my job there due to issues related to COVID, I was devastated that I would no longer be able to be there personally to support the patients I grew to love. But the story about the doctor healing those prisoners made me feel like I had another way to be part of my patients' lives. I can send them healing. I can connect with them. Even if I can't be there, and I do, I imagine them standing in front of me, and I see their face, and I say that prayer. I love you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Thank you. I don't know exactly what happens for those that end up their jolt after I say the prayer. However, I do know what happens for me. My quality of life improves. I moved 500 miles south in April, away from my familiar surroundings. So for my birthday, I decided to connect when I felt alone. In September, I planned not one, but four different Zoom birthday parties with different groups of people that I know. Each Zoom party was filled with party favors, games, and lots of laughs. I have since felt connected to everyone, even though I was physically separate from my friends and family. We may usually think of ourselves as separate individuals, and connection only happens when we cross paths with each other, on the street or in a store. You are there in Arizona, and I am here in New Mexico. I'm making a connection with all of you in the audience right now, and I like it. But we can connect, even if we are not together. Why? Because I believe we are all there. We are all connected, always. And this is good news because you may find times in your life where you will be faced with unexpected isolation, or maybe as a single parent, as the last child moves out, maybe a divorce or the loss of a partner to death. The silence can be deafening and very lonely, but being alone does not mean you need to be lonely. Still connect with people just by intending good things, even if you don't know them. Because who knows, if we are all one, it may just work. In the immortal words of John Lennon, you may say, I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you will join us and the world will live as one. Thank you.